Boom, we're live, and I just saw Vorpal's comment come in. You're in early, Vorpal. Look at that. Right from the get-go. Hello, crew. God bless. Way to go, crew. I like crew. I feel like a crew. We'll let some folks come in, but I'll hit the three tidbits that I'm going to cover. Um, I'm going to be doing 12 45-minute shows in a row tomorrow on the Whiskey Channel. And... I'm going to call for some board game support, more on that later. So hopefully the crew will show up to that. Um, we'll talk a little bit, of course, about board games. I'm playing uh, Phil Eklund's. I just, hello, a lot, knocking Neanderthal down. That's not easy to do. Loved Neanderthal. And I've got to get into Greenland, which uses many of the same, like, kind of systems. I don't know if they, you know, the cards splay out and stuff, but they have different meanings. So I'll be getting into talking about uh, Neanderthal and the review I put out on it, and then excited to play Greenland. Oh, and then we'll talk about how Dan Payne called him, my music man. He and I had kicked around doing a whole separate channel um, because, uh, of course, he's Canadian, but we will sit and FaceTime and have these hilarious discussions. And he was like, we should do this. And we talked about doing it as another channel, but that's extra and hard. So what we are probably, what we are planning on tentatively doing is take turns going on each other's board game channels, titling them as topic-related discussions so nobody thinks we're going to be talking about Greenland or something, and then have fun doing some discussion. Because ultimately, especially for me, YouTube is about fun and connecting and bonding. So let's see. Uh, so far, we got Timon 6219 in. 6219. Uh, we got Vorpal's in. Vorpal says, uh, love the hearts and minds video. Oh, I knew you would, Vorpal. Vorpal loves Vietnam. Uh, it's favorite war theme. I've read the uh, manual on that. Uh, of course, it's card driven game, CBG. And uh, looks very straightforward. So um, what was funny was I'm torn between wanting to get into Greenland because once you kind of grok what's what you're doing in either one of these, the other one is much more approachable to jump into. You just got to learn kind of the particular differences. And uh, But I've also been playing Furnace with my wife. And boy, is that a fun, quick little optimization game. So um, let's see, we'll let a few more people roll in if they roll in. Of course, some people will watch this later. Um, so we'll just kind of uh, meander for a little bit. And I won't go too long because I need to save the voice. So um, we'll start talking about it. Then I'll reference uh, more toward the end what I'm hoping board gamers will do for me. So tomorrow we're doing... The Scotch Show, Scotch Test Dummies, Scotch Test Dummies. We're doing 12 hours of boom. Now you can see the uh, poster behind me. We've done 12 hours of boom before. We usually do it at once a year in July or August. Way too hot. We talked about pushing it to October. Uh, we didn't do it in 2020 at all because uh, uh, my co-host on that show got COVID in October of 2020. Then I got it along with my family in November. I didn't get it from him. So we didn't do the 12 hours of boom uh, last year. We're doing it this year. Um, we opened the show at 9 a.m. We closed the show with just he and I at 8 uh, p.m. going all the way to 9. So that's 12 hours. And then in between, we have 10 different guests from all over the world. All right, Ireland, Scotland, and then mostly around the United States. But still distant lands, distant lands. Um, let's see, chaos. Oh, chase away the chills. There you go. What is your holiday beverage? Yeah, uh, Vorpal says uh, he's a ha having hot apple cider and Bacardi. Well, that sounds good. I always will have an art bag, which is always right over my shoulder down here. And the art bags are smoky, peaty drinks, and they're very, very good. But uh, your sounds much more warming, although a peated scotch is good. 
So here's what happens on the Scotch side, which is where I hope some of my board game fans will pop in. You don't have to talk or anything, but comment. I'm hoping for comments. So my co-host, Scott, which will sit here, he does not play a lot of games. Now, he doesn't hate them. Matter of fact, he plays, <laughs> yes, ashtray. Sometimes it has an ashtray smoky city flavor, and it's delicious somehow, and I've never smoked, and I don't like cigarettes. But, ooh, is it good. Uh, no, not one my favorite flavor either. So I'm with you. Peated whiskeys, uh, you got to kind of either love it right away. Some people hate it forever or some people come around to it. I'm a peat head, total peat head. Um, it's kind of like how some people, uh, all they play is magic. Some people, all they'll drink is peat whiskey. Um, I lean toward peat whiskey, but of course I like all whiskeys, just like I really like all games. Getting back to it. So my co-host plays a Simon game called Zombicide. He played it over at my house, uh, the thematic feel, the press of the horde. He loves zombie movies and stuff. So he got it. He played it with his sons. Perfect connection. Uh, his sons are both in college now. And still, when they come home, uh, they'll get together and they'll play, you know, a couple scenarios and stuff. So he gets board gaming. But he looks this way in my house. There's built-in bookshelves here with I don't know, 600 board games, an obscene amount. And he thinks that's ridiculous. And let's be honest, it probably is, but I've got about 400 bottles of whiskey, equally ridiculous. And I try to point out that he's being hypocritical, but we have fun with it. But um, at 3 p.m., 3 p.m. Central Time, we're having on David or Dave Beck, who is a designer of a board game that is kickstarting in 2022 called The Still. So it's got that whiskey tie-in, and I'm going to have them on. And I thought it would also be fun. Now, you don't have to come in just at that time, but it would be fun if any time you see our show, Scotch Test Dummies popping up, because they'll be going from 9 a.m. Central to 9 p.m. was when we'll hopefully shut down up my fire pit out here. Pop in at any time and just say, I love board games. I wish Bart could talk or the chief could talk more about board games. Then you can disappear. You can just pop into the live Scotch Test Dummy show, whatever hour it is, hit it, and then get out or stay and watch the fun. So uh, the shows will be 45 minutes long. So uh, like if it starts at uh, 10, it'll go to 10.45. We shut down, we get 15 minutes to do food, bathroom, rest the throat, boom, we're right back into making our next connection. So I'll come back to that before. I'm a collector too. Ooh, what do we got here? Wow, 7,000 sci-fi fantasy books. That's awesome. I am a huge reader. My three hobbies would be number one reading, sixth grade, my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Reibold, got me hooked on reading. Um, and then I became an avid reader, a lot of World War II history kind of stuff, and then apocalyptic 80s fiction. That was fun. Uh, but really everything. Uh, now I do a lot of uh, uh, nonfiction stuff. Um, then board gaming, because I got into that when I was 13. So what, seventh, eighth grade. And uh, whiskey much later, which I got into when I was about 40. I was not much of a drinker, really, of anything. Um, oddly enough, I have all this, but I really don't, well, I should say I don't drink much, but compared to the normal person, I drink more whiskey than they do. Let's see what some of the comments are, and then we'll talk about this. If I needed to be, uh, told that this is not my first day. I must have missed prior conversations. Not my favorite flavor. Got it. Now I'm with you. Sorry. Uh, Kabuki's in. Kabuki, what is up? How are you doing? Uh, what is this? Chief, uh, why don't you have a link to your whiskey channel below? Now, that is a great idea, and I'll go do it post. So that would have been a great idea. So um, I, I came home. I was running errands, threw this up real quick, and then thought, let me get on and get going. Let's see. Hello. Hello. What do we got here? Uh, Chief is on a binge. <laughs> well, supposedly. Uh, let's see. I started playing uh, war games in high school. Yeah, mine was uh, age 13. 
I was reading everything I could about B-17s um, and uh, found a board game store, which I thought was a bookstore. And then I was like, oh, what's this? And found B-17 Queen of the Skies and bought it. Look at that. Started in 19, whoops, 1975. Sweet. Yep, 83. Been on a good run. Let's see. Sci-fi book, sixth grade. Love it. Perfect. Um, I remember I might have been in my 20s and I was on some book forum. I don't know if it was Goodreads or whatever, but uh, I, I wanted to find something that was polarizing that I hadn't found before. And I wanted to see something that had a ton of positives and then polar opposite. And it was um, it was Starship Troopers, <laughs> Heinlein, Heinlein or Heinlein, Heinlein. And uh, man, the, the comments coming in were, this is totalitarianism. And, and then, then it would be, this is the best book I've ever read. <laughs> I was like, wow, I, I need to read this. And, uh, and then when the movie came out, or maybe the movie, I can't remember. The movie was okay in, in its own way, um, but uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was interesting. And it was written like in the 50s. I was like, what? Uh, Kabuki, B-17, Queen of the Skies. I fell in love with that one back in the day too. Yes. Um, uh, I realized that I am a um, – I same reason. I never was a big role-playing fan, but I played some role-playing, and I always loved – the theater of the mind. Same deal with reading. I loved when I would get lost in the story, lost in the book. Um, and that was where B-17 was a sweet spot. Um, it felt, uh, although it was abstract and more comic booky, that one plane would have all this happen, somehow it felt more real. I didn't want a simulation of like trimming the uh, the, the engines and the oil. It, it needed to be that action to hold and boy, did it deliver on its on my very first board game purchase. What's Vorpal saying here? Uh, movie did not match the book. No, not really. I mean, it came close to some things. It had some of the ideas. It had the teacher, the citizenship thing. Um, so not bad. Uh, babes and board games. My group has been playing a lot of Nemesis. I've got a good buddy of mine, a work buddy that has Nemesis, and he loves it. The past few weeks really makes you feel like you're in a space slasher movie, difficult and challenging as well. I've got to play this with him. Um, I actually, uh, he was one of my uh, officers that I was supervising and uh, had him come over because all he was doing, not that it was bad, I video game and did first person shooters and everything, but he, his circle of friends uh, were all video gamers and I had him come over to my house for a Battlestar Galactica game. He loved it, and then he now has a – he plays more board games than I do now. He has a weekly group that comes over. He has no kids. He and his wife love playing games. Um, so he gets more gaming in than I do now, and I'm always jealous. A uh, book is much richer. I would say books are always much richer. I like when there is a movie um, – well, like – I don't think the matrix is designed off, to, off of, well, I know it's not from a book. I know there's some, I know where some of the themes come from, but I love that in a movie when they piece these visual things together that I'm not sure I would get from a book. That's where something like the matrix shows what movies can do. But whenever there's an adaptation from a book and I've read the book Patriot games, I love Tom Clancy Patriot games and the book or the movie missed the fact that the, the terrorists were brothers and it was that visceral thing. They made it some kind of like, oh, he messed up my perfect streak. And I was like, what? What the hell? <laughs> I was pissed. And it was still a good movie, but I was pissed because I was like, that's not the motivation of the terrorists. Sorry. Uh, what is Timon saying? I will admit I played a war game on a boat going to Germany when I was 13. Wow. It was conflict. The game uh, was furnished by the ship. Wow. That's cool. I love that. It's neat. Uh, let's see. Kabuki, I forget who, uh, but there was an author, Golden Age, I'm pretty sure, and someone asked him, quote, what is the best age to read science fiction? And, quote, he answered 14 or something to that effect. Yeah, I think you're – I still love sci-fi. Um, but uh, I think at that age, the idea that you can get lost in the fanciful is good. Um I also was reading books on Tarawa. <laughs> so who knows? I was, a, I was a strange child. 
I remember it was a beautiful Saturday in the mountains of Colorado. And I was I was playing either ambush or B-17, mission after mission after mission. I think it was a B-17 day. And my parents must have got concerned that I was in my room for too long, maybe depressed or something. They they each popped in at different times. And then my dad was like, What are you doing? Don't you want to get outside? And I'm like, No, I'm on my way to Berlin. They were like, say again. <laughs> and they were like, wow, you're a weird kid, man. I'm like, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm seven zones in. I got to see if they get back. And they left and were like, okay, well, that's our boy. Let's see, what do we got here? Book is much richer. Where was I at? There's Kabuki's comment. Uh, let's see, Kabuki says, Starship Troopers, the movie was fun too, just very different from the book. It was, it was. Um, let's see, man, it just jumped on me, sorry. Um, so there's babes and board games. The players assume roles of people that work on a spaceship like pilot, captain, soldier, science, and engineer. What did I miss? There must have been a prior one. Sorry, things jump. Must have been a game uh, similar to BSG, okay. Um, my favorite science fiction is Golden Age, says Kabuki. Well, that's cool. I've been reading more uh, Heinlein. Um, oh, I got two sitting over there now that I picked up because I had read, oh, Stranger in a Strange Land, I think, and it was so different and trippy. I think that was it. It had like a an alien Jesus thing going on, if I remember right. Read that years ago, but it was so because it's like modern times have kind of caught up. It was trippy and how it was set up, but it was really interesting to read. Um, let's see. I just read some of Asimov's stuff too, his early stuff, which is interesting. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, oh, I would love to see the Dune movie. I'm really looking forward to the Matrix 4 too, but. We'll see how it goes. I love Dune. Um, I've still got to read everything that's come after, but the originals, I, they just hooked me. Um, yep, the new Matrix is coming out. Yeah, it's December 22nd. It's coming out. Um, uh, Neo takes the blue pill. I don't know. I saw a little bit of a trailer. I usually skip trailers, but uh, let's see. You know, he's also working on a comic book that I backed on Kickstarter where he's like this immortal god. Uh, I'm forgetting the name of it now, but there's there's an option to make that into a movie as well. Think kind of like John Wick, but um, a god who doesn't want, he's a god of war basically, but he is tired of it because he's been doing it for millennia upon millennia. Should be a new, neat concept. When those comics come in, maybe I'll bring them on the show. Um, Matrix was a massive disappointment. As a Doctor Who fan, I had the plot figured out in the first time. Well, that's neat, but come on. The idea, I like the very first one best. And uh, the, the, my funny side story is um, uh, I was married, uh, first wife, and uh, we walk in and we hit the wrong theater, but it was running the Matrix right near the helicopter scene at the end. And I'm like, this is so confusing. I thought, you know, we thought we missed five minutes. We ended up leaving and then coming back and watching the actual movie later. I loved it. Um, the idea that um, that you need to wake up and that you could be being used in the movie as a battery, but as a function maybe of our economic system even. There's some neat thoughts in there. Uh, let's see. Heinlein is my favorite author. Um, he might be mine as well. So far ahead of his time, too. If you think Starship Troopers, I want to say it was written in 57, and his lead character is, is he from Brazil? I'm forgetting his name. Uh, but I think he's Brazilian or South American or something. And so the idea in that women were the pilots because of their, their ability to have quicker reflexes, I mean, he was way ahead of his time in 57, if you think about it. So... Um, uh, let's see. He's good with characters. Yes. New Dune. Uh, Babes of Board Games. New Dune doesn't look good. Oh. I don't know. It's 
So I love the book. Again, it's so hard to capture that. But anytime, if they go for it, what they're able to do with, uh, I almost wish it was Dune on HBO and they were able to spread it out over season upon season and really dive deep and play it. Play it. Buenos Aires. That's it. That's it. I love that. Um, let's see. If you have the powers of God, what is this? Uh, why mess around with dodging bullets and lifting helicopters when you can just will the agents out of existence? Well, he had to get to that point. Mentally, he had to get to that point. He was still coming alive. Uh, let's see. Mentally, Argentina. Argentina family was from Philippines, I believe. Uh, Neo did things the hard way. Three movies the hard way. Got it. All right, let's come back a little bit on this. So, um, again, we'll touch on Scotch Test Dummies. Tomorrow, 9 a.m. Central Time, we start 12 Hours of Boom. It's on the poster. That's an old poster. But my co-host will jazz me about my board games all the time. Now, he likes games, but we use it as like a foil, something we can batter each other. And let's be honest, um, for a non-whiskey drinker, uh, this is a crazy amount of whiskey. For a non-game player, I have an insane amount of games. People don't even know this many games exist. Then they see them and they're like, what? And they're confused. I get it. So, uh, but come on and, and if, if people pop in, just pop in, leave a little message and say more board games. You need more board games on the Scott show. <laughs> It'll drive him nuts. You start drinking at 9 a.m. I will tell you, first of all, I don't like drinking after 8 p.m. I don't sleep well with whiskey in the belly. Um, tasters, professional tasters, now they spit. <laughs> the taste buds, like anything else early in the morning, you have a better nose, better taste because you haven't had all this stuff and you're not fatigued. So a lot of whiskey tasting, professionally wise, will be done early. Now, again, they spit out that whiskey, or so they say. But uh, yeah, we'll be doing the show. We usually film. We film on Mondays usually. And we usually start at ten. So, but um, I had, I had a, like a family friend came over and saw all the liquor and said, "What are you, an alcoholic?" I'm like, uh, "I've known alcoholics. They can't hold that much liquor. It's gone." And they were like, "Oh, that's a good point." So yeah, I'm a sipper. I'm a sipper. I will spend like my wife and I will sit down, uh, watch a movie. And I'll pour an ounce, and you can nose it and sip it for an hour. So, um, mass amounts of bottles doesn't mean mass amounts of consumption. Keith, too funny. I went in blind too, but I was very happy with what I got. I miss Keith. What did he say? Okay. Uh, what else we got? Can we, then we walked into the Matrix. Oh, yeah. Uh, boy, I bet that will be better. <laughs> Upcoming fan of Menace. <laughs> You're probably correct. So, um, all right, next thing. Uh, Dan Pancaldi. So, no enemies here. And Pancaldi and I, he does the music for the show and uh, does music for the Scott show as well. A Canadian. Um, and uh, we will FaceTime each other and chat and just have a ball. I made him laugh so hard last night, he had a headache. He was mad. He's like, I had a headache. It took me a while to get rid of it. You made me laugh. So we have a good time. And we've always joked around that we needed to do our own show and do just different topics. Well, setting up another to a show and then staying on a, on a track. And I already have another show. And, and, it just, and so what we've decided is, Whenever we feel like it, I may pop on his show and we'll have a topic and we'll discuss great ideas he has. Um, I like to think I'm open to all kinds of ideas and thought and exploration. So is he. Um, and then we'll just, the next time we feel like getting together, boom, we'll do it on my channel. So that way we're back and forth. Is it off topic from the channel? Yes because we may not be discussing board games, but we'll make sure it's in the title and it should be fun. And I, and regardless, if we're having fun, he and I, you know, I think it's a gathering place in general. And if it brings more people to the channel that then find board games, all the better. My favorite t-shirt, by the way, it's that Boba Fett with that whole Pulp Fiction kind of thing going on. Um, so that will be something Dan and I are doing. 
Uh, let's see. <laughs> what is your Halloween costume? Vorpal's going to be Dr. Fauci. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I can't believe there's the uh, the ventriloquist comic. <clears throat> uh, I've watched him a few times. He's been around for like 30 years. But he's been nowhere to be found. And he has this old man dummy. Has nothing to do with Biden. But it looks like Biden. He was doing this old man grumpy ventriloquist thing like 20 years ago. It was hilarious then. And I thought this guy's going to be front and center because uh, I know the doll or the ventriloquist dummy or whatever has its own name and everything. I don't remember it, but it looks like Biden. And I thought he would be everywhere. Squirrel, I don't know how I got on that topic, but um, I think it was because Halloween and it would be neat to be, um, I think, the actor with like a Biden little ventriloquist act. Jeff Dunham, that's it. Where was that? Kabuki is so smart. Kabuki, you're so smart. And I thought that would be hilarious. Now, that would take a lot of work. I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I said that too. The puppet does look like Biden. I know, and I'm thinking, why isn't he all over the news? Because of his humor that he's been doing forever. <laughs> so Magnus, Magnus Mott von Magnus is, is in. I know, I know. Uh, hello from Sweden. Uh, Magnus here can't stay at work. Just popping in to say hello. Thank you, Magnus. Hey, pop into the whiskey show tomorrow. Scotch test dummies. We're doing 12 hours of shows. Just pop in in the comments and say more board games on the whiskey channel. And that'll drive my host crazy is what I'm trying to do. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, let's see. We got Kabuki. Oh, Magnus. All right. Now let's come to, let me take that back off. Uh, Phil Eklund game. Holy moly. And I love Eklund Games. I love the the what he does in a small package. And these little tiny games, these games that I can hold in one hand that have the big Neanderthal man face on it, this is the first uh, game I tried. These are both very similar in style and systems. Um, but, oh, my God, my wife actually was like, when you play that game, you talk to yourself almost nonstop. And it's like a mumbling talking. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I love, I, I tried to get her to come in and play with me. And I explained it to her. And I said, I can walk you through this. And she went, mm, this isn't my kind of game. And it probably isn't. Um, uh, I was loving playing solo with all three characters. And they're all there. And I'm trying to do them to the best of their individual abilities. And that tug of war and the daughters and the marriaging and the, the going off and the north or the shelf, the ice shelf coming in. Unbelievable game. And it had my frontal brain, my frontal lobe was going crazy. I loved it. Now, if you get it, the rule book's very procedural. You want to set it up and just start playing and be confused. Then it'll all kick in and all grok, as Heinlein would say. That's Heinlein. I think that's Stranger in a Strange Land. And then you're off and running. And then you're like, oh, my God, this. Oh, my God, this. Oh, my goodness. That's a warrior tribe. And they're doing what? And, um, you know, it's his take on, on how society started that Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon cross bred, basically, or intermarried. And that started the spark of what we now know. That's just a tidbit. As you know, Phil Eklund will go into his stuff. But um, unbelievable game. Unbelievable. I can't wait to get into this because this is Greenland and there's Norse. And I can't remember. Thal. Thal. I can't remember the names of the races. But like I think the the maybe the Eskimos were called Pauls or Thals. But they are the only ones that survived, I guess, in real life. But you have three races there just trying to stay alive and also fight with each other, or you can do it cooperatively. But I can't wait to get into that. Um, let's see, been playing several sessions, Pacific Fury. So yep, there's some good war talk, good. Very nice short, tight game. Uh, raffle, give away those games. What is this? Are you going to hold a raffle and give away those games? No, no. Every once in a while, I'll sell something on eBay. If, if I, got something and I'm like, I'll not play the, well, 
sometimes I'll even buy the, like this is the third edition. I don't have the other editions, but I might. I'm one that'll buy that updated edition and then I'll usually sell off the old one. Oh, I need to sell more games. I'm trying to get rid of games. I'll go look every once in a while and go, okay, I want this. Um, I may play it five years from now. Or I'm keeping this because I enjoy the cover. <laughs> Sometimes it's that. Uh, but I try to get them played. Try. Uh, let's see. I have an obsession. I have an obsession. I just have to play Torpedo 8. I want to sync that character. Carrier. That's a character. Any game system will do. Nemo's War has still been my solo go-to game the past year or so. That's a good one. Uh, Judd loves it. I've never actually played that one. Um, Victory Point Games put it out. I know it got picked up, I believe, as well. It's supposed to be reprinted, maybe? I don't know. So let's see. Where are we at? We're at 31 minutes in, basically. Keep this on screen. Um, uh, if you enjoy it, it definitely feels like you're playing a history game. Now, again, we don't really know what happened, at least in the Neanderthal one that I, but I did do 23 and me and I have a, a decent percentage of Neanderthal in me. Hello. And I'm six, six. That's cause my, uh, my lineage three fourths of my grandparents were from Germany. So. Go figure. Maybe that's why I'm 6'6". Six, six. All right. So the Scott Show tomorrow. Pop in there. Pancaldi and I will be doing some different topic-related uh, shows that would be uh, hopefully fun and entertaining. We just have fun. Um, and then Phil Eklund's games. Uh, I'm going to get ready to wrap it up. Uh, I'll be doing plenty of talking tomorrow. But does anybody have anything else going on? I know I got a few people in currently. Obviously, this will go up so people can watch it later. Um, all right, we'll get ready. I will wrap it up in the next three minutes. So still playing Napoleon. Uh, still playing Napoleon uh, Commands and Colors. Oh, Napoleonics. You know, um, I haven't played it since Judd was over. Um, and next time he comes over, I want to play Samurai with him. I've been looking. I was looking at Vasil today. He plays so many games on Vasil. I think I need to. I had Vasil years ago. I mean, 12 years ago. I was playing certain games. Um, oh, I think I even, I might have even played Battle Lore on Vasil um, early on. I don't know if that's just a dream or if that was real, but um, so I would love to get back on and play some games in that form or fashion, just because even when Judd comes over, he lives about a oh, half hour away, but you know, then you come over, you sit down, you, you chat for a while, you set up the game. If I could get on and just play for an hour and we could knock out a game, that would be great. Vorpal here is Vietnam table has been active. In one game, the uh, PBR took a helm hit and was disabled by a lucky RPG shot. Wow, that's cool. So let's see. I used to play Twilight 2000, and uh, they've got a new version coming out from, oh, it's from Sweden or something. It's an RPG of the Third World War where you're stuck in Poland, and they had a whole module where you were on basically a patrol boat that was armed and trying to make it down a river, and I played that, and that made me love the uh, Brownwater Navy or those little PBRs so much. What is it? What is it? Patrol boat, boat reconnaissance? I can't remember what it means. Currently playing Pandemic, says uh, Kabuki Kid. Season Zero with a group. Loving that so far. Only three games in. I picked up Season Zero as well. I love the narrative storytelling that's told, um, but my family didn't like those as much. Now, now my spouse, my wife loves above and below, uh, loves it. She just told me the other day we we're playing furnace and she goes, this is fun. But I want to play above and below again. <laughs> and we played the heck out of that probably 20 times. No good war games recently. We'll wrap up. We'll hit everybody and then we'll close down here. Oh, Anthony 
as in here. In the other game, Fort Huey's raided a village. There was not enough radios. CO's helicopter took a radio hit. Return to the base. Wow. What's up? Um, not much. Big 12-hour shows. 12 45-minute shows tomorrow. Pop in and just say in the comments, more. you guys need more board games. My co-host uh, thinks I'm too obsessed with board games, so I'm hoping everybody will come in and give them a hard time. Have you played Julius Caesar? I have not. Uh, let's see. Oh, and some games, the newest crew game. Yeah, I saw the crew, but it, I don't know. I saw a playthrough, and it didn't end. Despite my usual distaste for trick-taking games. I like trick-taking games normally, but there's no one in my house that does. I grew up at my grandparents. We would always play trick-taking games like hearts and spades. All right, Vietnam RPG, very cool. Uh, Palo Mori has a Caesar game. I've seen that based on the kind of Blitzkrieg. Yeah, it's not based on, but it's in the same family of. Kabuki says, hi, did someone say 12 hours of shows? There's Christmas. Christmas on Crestline is going to be in as well. Uh, he's a lover of Christmas and a friend and a local. He's won competitions with his Christmas lights and uh, also likes whiskey. So I think I've gotten him into only a few board games. I shanghaied him. There's Christmas. <laughs> I think someone might be upstairs or I'm being burgled. We'll have to see. Say in the comments, I want my TV. There you go. Uh, what was this? What was this? Hi, Chief from sunny Florida, Richard Savage. Love the last name. My sister lives in Tampa. Lives in Tampa. Uh, let's see. Do, do you know the name of the Palomore game? Well, there is Blitz uh, or Blitz Krieg. Can't remember. Blitz. I think it's Blitz. That's World War II in 20 minutes. That's good. And then I can't remember. The other one is called Rome or something. Uh, if you go to Paolo Mori on Board Game Geek, and you'll see it. Uh, do, 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 retired state trooper from Massachusetts. Excellent. You went down to Florida. 